Okay, and welcome back. Let's get back to learning how to use Affinity Photo. We left off on example five, now we're moving on to example six. Here we're gonna learn about warping, and this girl's crazy here, we're gonna warp it. So, move down to the pixel layer, and we're gonna go over here to the mesh warp tool. And you'll see we can't, and uh, warp this, we click on a point and then we have handles, but we don't want to do that, we want to only affect her here, so we're going to double click right here, and now we're going to double click here. Now when we click, we can warp her here. And then once we're happy with, once we're happy, we'll just click apply. Pretty crazy, yeah? Okay, moving on to example 7. Now we're going to learn about perspective. So click the layer, and now under the mesh warp tool, we're going to go to perspective. And we can change the perspective of this. And do that. And then, uh, it's under single plane right now, we're going to go to dual plane, and now it has more of a cube look. See, it's pretty cool how we can do that. Alright, and in example 8, we're going to learn about a lighting filter. And I gave this away by saying filter, so how do you think we do that? Well, we're going to click on the image and then we're going to go down here to live filters and we're going to find the option that says lighting uh, where did I see that uh, oh it's towards the bottom lighting filter so this node will change all of them will change uh, the the whole size this will just change well you get the idea This creates the a Gaussian blur. So right there. Example nine. This is more of um, an illustration feature, but wanted to show you that you you can still use glow effects. So click on the star icon. And now for an effect, I have to go down to effects. Let's add a Gaussian blur to this. And let's also add an outer glow. Since the star is already white, I'm going to change it to another color like blue. Because then the Gaussian blur would be pointless as I said in another video. So let's adjust the radius so we can see the blue. And that looks good. Quite a bright star. Okay, example 10 is to strain an image. Now, doing this will strain your entire document, so I just want to give you that heads up. To strain an image, I'm going to take the crop tool, click straighten, and now I'm going to draw a line that is um, parallel to the crooked area. So if I do that, it will automatically adjust the image. So I'll click apply, and see how I have this space here? because it rotated image. So I'll zoom out and whoop, hold the uh, command. Yeah, hold command and yeah, just hold command and then shift to constrain it. Wait a minute, I need to make sure I'm actually whoop. 
Yeah, I need to make sure I'm actually clicking the document. I was clicking the wrong thing. I need to make sure I'm clicking the layer. Ugh. Keep messing up. So there we are. Just hold command and enlarge it. Now I'm going to undo this because I don't want my other examples to be crooked as well. So that's how you straighten an image. Just use the crop tool and the straighten in button. Okay, example 11. This is more of this is another this is a painting feature but just to show you that you can still use a feature called painting alpha. See um, this girl's clothes. I have them in different layers. So if I click the shirt icon, and if I paint, whoop, let's uh, choose another color like blue. See, I paint over everything. If I have protect alpha, then I cannot paint over any transparent areas. I can only paint over uh, pixels that have already been created. So if I paint over this, only that I only have the shirt on that one layer, nothing else. And that's a good way to change um, color designs if you're not sure how to, if you're not sure on a, on a design. Skirt, and just showing that you can do that. Example 12 is a tool you probably already know of, the clone tool. So if I want to um, copy this tree here, then I'll hold Alt or Option, and I'll click a spot that I want to clone maybe this part right here. I clicked the right thing, right? Yeah. Oh, need to select the image. <laughs> okay. Now I'll put the tree right here. See, it's pretty cool, huh? A lot of you probably already know about the clone tool, and that doesn't look um, perfect, of course. But just showing you that you can do that. If I use the smudge tool, I can probably uh, blend those two, and I'm not sure where that... Oh, right here, smudge. Just to have it blend a little more. Yeah, it looks a little better. And then last, just showing other basic tips for you to get started with Affinity Photo. You set keyboard shortcuts. You, let's see, you could, if you want to change uh, keyboard shortcuts, then you go into Preferences. The Preferences will be in the Edit menu if you're under Windows. And this is what the Preferences will look like. Want to change keyboard shortcuts? Then you click here. And if you want to change the redo option, which I've already done, then go to edit because that would be edit and then redo. And then for redo, I have command Y. By default, it will be command shift Z. If you want to add columns to your tool set then towards the end of the view menu choose customize tools by default it's just one column so go to view and then customize tools and these are all of the tools in affinity photo and by default I had one column but since it but if I'm working in uh, small window then I can't see all the tools so change it to two. Flip layers I didn't know how to do this originally because in Affinity Designer the flip options are right here. If 
for affinity photo if you want to flip uh, this for example then go to arrange and then flip horizontally or just right click and go to transform and then flip that way nested adjustments on layers when I was showing you that those adjustments I made it, um, by default they will actually be nested over the layer if you don't want to do that then go to view and then go to assistant manager and then let's see where adjustments adding adjustment layer to selection add adjustment as child layer by default it adds adjustment as a new layer uh, I mean for people who use Photoshop that is most likely the option most people will use since I'm more into vector I'm not I'm used to having everything nested free up your workspace tabs and menus of adjustments masks and filters can also be accessed in the layer studio so everything here in the filters all of these can also be accessed right here under filters your there is also an effects tab but all the effects can be accessed here there is an adjustment tab all the adjustments can be accessed here so it's just a way to become familiar with a workspace and there are several ways of doing things I just want you to know that masks adjustments effects and filters can all be found right in the layer studio select single layers in groups so hold control for Windows or command for Mac to select a single layer or select the layer itself so if I go back to this example say I want to click this person I can't because in ex example 4 is grouped together so I'll hold command so I just select the person or scroll down and then with a the move tool selected just click that one just click that layer and then just that man will be selected so I guess that covers everything I hope that this was helpful and I hope you consider affinity photo have a good day